In this episode, we're going to talk about a compound or a drug called stamoxidine. So stick around and we'll uh, uncover and unpack uh, the role that it plays in uh, hair loss management. Welcome to the Hair Loss Show. Dr. Russell Knudsen and Dr. Vikram J. Aprakash discuss issues relating to hair loss and the medical and surgical treatment of hair loss in both men and women. Hi everyone and welcome back to the Hair Loss Show. My name is Dr. Vikram J. Aprakash and as we discuss we're going to talk about stomoxidine. Now that's a question that's been posed a number of times on the comments section and thanks again for making those comments. Keep those comments coming. Please remember to, to like and subscribe uh, to the channel as well. So uh, stomoxidine, uh, well what is stomoxidine? Well first of all stomoxidine is a prolyl 4 hydroxylase competitive inhibitor. Well, that's a real mouthful. In essence, if we look at the hair cycle, um, it's divided into various phases, anagen, telogen, catagen. And you may have heard these, and I don't want you to get, you, to get bogged down uh, in those phases. Regardless, what happens is, in, in short, a hair grows. It grows for anywhere between three to five years for, for most men. And then it will fall out as per, as per the normal life cycle of that hair. And then there's a period of dormancy between uh, that point where the original hair falls out and the new hair that's uh, beneath it starts to grow again and comes, uh, comes in its place. Uh, now this phase is called kenogen. It's not something that's you know commonly talked about. And in essence, what stamoxidine does uh, is that we think that it shortens that kenogen phase. Now normally it lasts. That phase normally lasts for about three months, uh, and this can potentially shorten that. So what that means is that uh, there's less time between hair shedding and the new hair coming through potentially that there will be. Now uh, with regards to how effective it is, well there's not a lot of data. The studies that have been done are very limited, uh, small numbers and haven't really been conclusive. The thing to note is uh, stamoxidine is uh, available, it's non-prescription, so it's not been reviewed by, uh, in Australia, like the TGA or in the US, the FDA, so it's not been uh, authorized by them. So it's, it's sold over the counter uh, through a couple of different uh, companies that have branded it uh, as their own. And what they, and how they are sort of marketing it is that it helps thicken the hair. And a lot of the commentary is that you apply it to the actual hair shaft as opposed to onto the to the skin. Now sort of you've got to be mindful of, uh, of things like that especially because the the hair shaft itself is essentially dead so how uh, what we think that it's doing is to try and essentially thicken up uh, the uh, shaft diameter of that particular hair. So I think stamoxidine is reasonably safe. I don't think there's any real downside as opposed to, uh, apart from the cost. Uh, it's not something that uh, I use in my practice uh, or in my sort of armory of, of things to offer patients that are uh, complaining of hair loss, but I don't have an issue with it. And it's, uh, like I said, it's available uh, over the counter. So um, feel free to add that to your uh, regime. So I hope that answers the question. Like I said, we've been getting a lot of questions on stamoxidine. So uh, thanks again for watching and we'll see you on the next episode. Take care.